guys. We're ready to mix up some gel coat. This is a like a glorious day for us. Um, this means that we're making good progress now. So we're gonna start gel coating the bottom half of the shaft alley in preparation of dropping down the shaft. So um, this, like everything, has its own ratio. It's uh, it's two. Uh, Two teaspoons per pint of this, of MEKP. That is the catalyst. This nasty stuff right here. So we're gonna mix up probably about a 24 ounce batch to start with. We just kind of put some notes up here on our wall. So if we're gonna do a 16 ounce batch, we'll add 10 cc of catalyst. A 24 ounce is gonna be 15 ounces of catalyst or uh, 15 cc of catalyst for 24 ounces of gel coat. And then our last batch, we'll add wax into it in addition. It's actually um, surface seal. This is the stuff that you wanna mix in there. So it fully cures. Um, same thing, three teaspoons of wax for a 16 ounce batch of gel coat and four and a half teaspoons for a 24 ounce batch of gel coat. This is an addition to the catalyst. You still have to add the catalyst or you're gonna have a mess on your hands and you'll be very disappointed with your results. So this stuff might need mix too. Nice hiss. We need to mix this. Oh, it does need mixed? Yeah. <coughs> I guess we, uh, powerful stuff, huh? Thank you. Do a little hit of that. Do we actually need to go pick up a mixer? It would be easier than a uh, hand stern, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, so we just popped our fresh can of uh, Guard Blight 1100 gel coat open. As you can see, there's been some settling, so always a good idea to look in your hole, make sure it is all incorporated before you pour into your mix container. Yeah, have fun getting this lid off too. Yeah, it was a real struggle. <laughs> so I'll give us the, hey, where's the rest? I don't know. <laughs> That better be five gallons. <laughs> so we just got a, a one gallon stir stick here. The other ones are pretty aggressive and we don't want it blasting everywhere. So we'll get it stirred up here. Get it, huh? Yeah. Feeling pretty good? It's good.
they got it, huh? Yeah, I think so. If not, we'll know it. Yeah. All right, well, time to do it. Yeah. I think we're ready. So what are we shooting for here? Is 24 to start with or you want a little bit less? Are you going to brush it out first or want me to come brush? Yeah, I'll probably brush out a bit first. gel cut 10 cc of mekp that's about a two percent that gives you about a 12 to 15 minute pot life at 77 it's somewhat cooler in here so that will give us a little more working time than that should be good Following us for a while, you know how the shaft out of looked when you started. It was a greasy, grimy mess. Yeah. It was fun to clean. Yeah, Tristan gave it a cleaning in Juno, and I think there was a lot of staining left. <laughs> yeah. So 
I taped off is more of just the guidelines. I'm trying not to go onto the tape. I don't want to leave a hard edge or anything like that. So, just coming up to the tape, and uh, and I'll, we'll be able to just peel it off later and um, come back with a second coat with the wax in it. We don't want to go all the way to the edge. Otherwise, we'll have to just clean it with acetone or dry it off or whatever to get rid of that waxy layer. So, just kind of a guideline. Yeah. Tell you one thing, these fly air masks make all the difference. Pretty sure our eyes are burning already. Five minutes ago. They're on their own side. Just get rid of any impurities or oil or dust or anything like that. Moisture. It looks more final. Yeah. It's starting to look a lot brighter too. I can already tell it's reflecting this light. Wow. Kind of forgot about that part of it. Wow. Dude. Yeah, look at it. Beautiful. That a beautiful thing. Just gotta admire it for a moment. Alright, pop cooking. Gotta keep going. Well, this is definitely the most exciting part. Even more so than the second coat, because the second coat you really can't see what's happening. <laughs> it's already coated, so the contrast is way different. You won't be able to see white on white very well. That's true. I find this part extremely satisfying. So as you can see, a little bit of catchiness that will be covered right up on the second pass. It'll look good. Probably about the same again, Dad. Mm -hmm. 16. So when this, once this is all gel coated, uh, it'll be really slippery once it gets like a layer of dust on it. So we're going to have uh, chunks of cardboard, such as that, that we'll throw down on top of it. Not only provide traction, but also keep us from dripping resin or any other things on it. Keep it nice and pretty. So that's our plan once it's done. Just so satisfying. Uh -huh. I love it. Just filling it in. So 
matte has a really tight finish on it, so it's pretty easy to gel coat at the end of the day. But if you have something more coarse like this robing or something, you really have to work your gel coat in. That's why we like finishing it off with the matte. Makes it nice and smooth and easy. With this roving, you end up with all kinds of ridges. Gathers dirt and grime and stains and yeah. Ooh. I think they finished with the roving over here and some sort of 45 material over there. <laughs> Just an easy, quick rollover, work it back and forth a couple times. Other stuff, you really have to go over it quite a few times to make sure you're filling in the crevices. So thankfully, unlike paint, if you lay your gel coat down thick, you don't have to worry about it being like gobby under a thick, thick coat. So it just cures through the catalyst and come back over it again, and yeah. All right, that looks pretty good back here. So right here, it's taped off. That's actually where our uh, coupling will be in here, and then our bearing block is going to be somewhere in here. We're not entirely sure yet, so it's taped off for the time being, and we'll return to it once we get the bearing block made and in place. Alright, look 
Barely even see the patches. So now we'll wait around for this to get tacky and apply our second coat with wax included. Alright everyone, so down here in the hole for another edition of Gel Coat Fun. So just got this divider done. Looks really nice. Working on the sump now. This gel coat gets two layers. I guess uh, the first coat is the uh, the flow coat, and the second layer is the gel coat. Or the first layer is gel coat without wax, and the second layer is what they call a flow coat that has wax included. So uh, two layers. This is the gel coat layer here, uh, bringing it down halfway, and then the second layer. Uh, same thing, that'll give me room enough to get a grinder in here just to knock off that sharp edge if there is any or anything like that. Uh, give it a nice transition there in the sump where you can't really see it. And then, um, yeah, I got this divider wall done. I'm also stopping right here and right there for now because uh, once I coat this, it'll be pretty hard to traverse um, over there where I need to coat the bulkhead, so just kind of taking it in steps and uh, trying not to overwhelm myself. But it's looking really good. Last time we were down here, we got the shaft alley uh, coated and all these forward patches here. Uh, just a little bit ago, I got the last few patches over here done. And, uh, yeah, that's where we're at, so keep on rolling here. A little bit more of this first coat, and it should be looking good. taking it in stages down here. <laughs> Mix me two more ounces. Oh. Just a little splash in the bottom, I think. So a mixer. Mixologist Tristan.
All right, everyone. We just got our first coat of uh, gel coat on the whole kit here. <clears throat> as well as over here on the port side. Looks great. Got this uh, sump over here done and the divider wall. So just kind of waiting for this all to tack up and then we'll go ahead and put our next coat on. We'll do two unwaxed coats on the bulkhead chunks just for that extra thickness. That's a, that's a permanent part of the official that we won't be moving again. So we're gonna lay it up nice and thick on the bulkheads here. Um, everything else, this stuff, and probably to like right there, just doing a two cup thing. We're also laying it up really thick in the sumps because same thing, we don't plan on moving them, but um, when we do redo the skin of the fish hold, we'll probably just cut right along here and tear that stuff out. So I'm gonna go thick on at least this part of the sump. Well, it's an exciting day. Uh, Matt and Tristan got our shaft alley gel coated yesterday and we are about ready to lower our shaft in. Um, we're going to be dropping in the intermediate shaft and in how long is that? 164 inches. 164 inches. Um, it's right here. It's been on the back deck for a while now. So pretty excited to get that up and out of our way and in its final place. So this should be interesting. Hopefully it goes as smooth as pulling out the tail shaft went, um, just in reverse. Yep. Well, the rigging is pretty simple on it. Um, there's no real good way to tie off this end, but it does have a bolt that goes through. So uh, we just tied a couple of clove hitches here and then the smaller man line goes through a bolt right there. It's tied on the side and also on the other side. That'll prevent this from sliding down because this shaft is quite slippery. Uh, we have the coupling off because it needs to come off to go through the bulkhead into the engine room. And uh, we had it off prior to this and it's just uh, kind of a hassle to put it on and pull it back off again. So that'll be fine for that. We're just gonna go ahead and get hooked up to it on this chain hoist and start lowering it down. Once we reach the limit of this chain hoist, we'll just use this forward hook. We'll hook into a, this other line right here probably, or tie that off on one of those loops. And then we can let that take the load. We'll rehitch our chain hoist uh, more forward, or I guess aft, one might say and uh, just kind of continue the process till we get it down there. So here we go. So I think the shaft weighs, uh, it's, it's fairly heavy. I mean, it's not terribly heavy, but it's pretty heavy. But I think it's somewhere around 250 pounds, um, give or take a little bit. I'm not exactly sure, but it's some, somewhere right in that, uh, right in that range. So it's a substantial chunk of steel for sure so yeah let's get her going here huh yep so i guess the first thing we'll do is just drag this over um we're really really hoping this is actually going to fit through this hole so uh if you can just kind of see it's got to go through there past the new bulkhead past that center uh bin divider and um, almost to the bulkhead wall. And hopefully there's enough room right here for the coupling to, to clear. If not, we're gonna have to take it off, which we're hoping that we don't have to do. So yeah, it's gonna be a tight fit. But we did measure it before, and, uh, and I hope that we're correct on our measurements. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, we'll find out. All right, so we got our rigging kind of set up, a bit of a plan. Uh, got a ratchet strap, we took the table off, it's in the way. 
ran up there and back to here, and that way it'll control the shaft from being pushed this way. With a fluke piece. Down toward the fish hold. That loop will go in there. Yeah, so uh, I guess we'll just start by getting this hooked, huh? Yep. Move it a little bit here. Up on top. Okay. Um, let's see, what do we want to take another bite with that, you think? Yeah. This is, uh, is that going to be, you know, I see what's going on here, but... Yeah, take take another bite just like that, but over a little bit more. That'll take up some slack. Just exactly like that loop. Yep. Yep, go through and then back around. There you go. Yep, just like that. That's all you gotta do. Okay. Can we can pull this out and hook it and just hoist it that way or you guys can lift it. Uh well maybe if one of us just stays here to hook this and somebody goes over there and we pick up on that end, I think, to take up some of that slack so we don't load up the, the ratchet too much. Right. Okay. So now if we just go down with this and up with the other, we should be fine, right? Because yeah. this is gonna control it from shooting down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead and lower down on that some. tip it now okay. so um get roll it into that corner right there t just pull it a little no not don't put your fingers in there though yeah there we go perfect okay now it's just teetering now so um yeah if you can unhook your hook yeah now uh just kind of reset that huh yep Well, I can't really go too far now. But I tell you what, if you get a foot in between something hard and this comes down on it, you're gonna have a sore toe. Yeah. So I think just in like a point over here. Well, once we get that down, we make it into ourselves. Yeah, I guess we just get it down the rest of the way and see, right? This could actually be loosened and if we had if you have something to tie on there and take another bite back a little bit more would be good. Because okay. then it keeps, you know, lifting it like, or lowering it kind of straight. Yeah. So we're 
just trying to keep the load from shifting forward. So we got a half hitch here. Got tied there, dad's gonna untie, and then we'll lower this chain hoist and it should kind of just glide down. Yeah, what do we need? A few, four feet there. So yeah, just push down a little bit and kind of hold it key. I think you're just gonna have to uh, slowly just keep a little pressure on it, T. Yeah, just let it slide a little bit. You guys ready? We're ready. All right. I, I think we're pretty good. Oh yeah, no worries. Just tell us when you're clear and we'll just flip it forward a bit, huh? Yeah, go ahead and slip her forward a hair. Okay, a little more. Another eight inches. We go. Just that discretion. Forward again or not yet? Uh, yeah, you should be good. Right there. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay, almost, almost clear here. Uh, I can almost look lower down. Uh, Do I need to go one way or the other? No, I think that's all it can be right there. Okay. So let me get this thing into place. If, if you just even drop down a the hair, then yep. probably go forward a bit more. Yep. Swap this thing. Okay. Oh, you lost your tension, huh? Yep. Go ahead and go forward. There we go. We're going down. She fits. Okay, stop for a sec. Okay. Just there. Okay, alrighty. It was hitting this combing right there. And yeah, <laughs> mere centimeters to start sending I don't use centimeters, what? Just a little slack tee holding that. Okay. A little slack tee. There we go. So we're clear up there now? Uh, we are clear up here, yeah. Okay. Well, this can't really... She's set to go in. So go ahead and let off on that, Tristan, and give me this loop back right here. And I'm just going to tie this around the pillar right here okay. just to keep it from doing any kind of weird... Flopping. Well, like we say, we're not professional riggers, so I'm sure there's a thousand different ways we could do this better, but we use the tools we have on hand and take it nice and slow. Oh, damn. Yep. No smash toes or fingers. Nope. No gaping holes through the bottom of the boat. Nope. So I guess we did okay. Yeah. No strained backs. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I guess we'll lower this the rest of the way, huh? Uh-huh. All right. Here you go, T. You're going to hold this. Hold the peoples. Ready? I'm ready. All right. Add about two more feet, and then I'll re-rig. Should just keep sliding forward until you're straight up and down there. And we're good. We got plenty of room here. Okay. Well, we did it, guys. Yeah. So I think that, uh, could you hand me that ratchet strap over here, Tristan? Or that yellow one, wherever it got off to? Right here? Yeah. Thank you. All right, down the fish hold now. Got a series of saddles, I guess, using husky ratchet straps. 
Yeah. I think we are in pretty good shape here. So, uh, what are we lowering this down then, huh? Yep. Got back and just get it even, I guess. Is that the plan? That's the plan. Are you ready? Yeah, I'll just continue to hold tension here. Shouldn't really be able to go anywhere. As long as uh, you don't drop your end too much or too fast. Yeah, let's do that. Um, your end is still supported, so. Like that piece of wood that I handed you, that's pretty much going to be where it needs to be. Okay. Back there, height wise. Like, right like this? If that was a bearing block, I think flat. Flat? Yeah. It'll clear the couple. I guess so. Okay. Somewhere in there. Yeah, let's just do that. Uh, okay. I'll pick the sand and you can just unhook these hooks. Are you ready? Yeah. Got it? Mm -hmm. There you go. Alright. And let's just set it down slowly, yeah? Don't hurt your back. There you go, beautiful. You can just unhook that right there. Are we going on to that bearing? Uh, yep. Log center. Yay. It just pushed that rag out of the way. Okay, that should be good for now. So I think next is to get the coupling on and lined up. Mm -hmm. And that's probably gonna be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we're gonna do that. I think we're gonna have to do, like you said, cut a piece of wood and put it back there. Yeah. And then, um, We'll just make a simple little plate to bolt onto the coupler in there. And then we can, we'll have to push, we'll have to push against something. Uh, that's gonna be tricky. Okay guys, well this is the other side of our jig. Uh, this is the coupling that connects the intermediate shaft to the reduction gear. So what I did was I just took a thin piece of aluminum plate right here. It fits in the split of this coupling. These are split couplings. And what they do is after you insert the shaft in there, you tighten down these bolts and it pinches the shaft. And of course there's a key way to keep it from spinning. So uh, I just utilized the split on here because it's pretty accurate as far as its positioning top and bottom and I cut a plate that goes down to the bottom of it here drilled two holes in it where I could slip the bolts in there had to add a couple of little pieces of paper for sh shims just to pinch it in there and I tightened it down but first I drilled a, a tiny little hole right there in my plate and then a hole down here so I could pass my strings through there and I could knot it. And then I carefully measured across each way and centered it. And when it was nice and centered, I tightened these up. Had to tap it a few times, readjust it, and tighten these down again. But now, same thing, we're probably within a half thou of being perfectly centered. And that is uh, probably about as best as it's ever going to get and way within spec so really uh, for this type of thing since we're just uh, using this as a, a start point and an end point between the two to align everything in the middle the positioning is still critical on this but but a few thousandths won't make a, a difference one way or another 
a quarter inch, an eighth of an inch, yeah, that's a different story. But a thou, yeah, that's not gonna matter any. And reality of it is that if this whole shaft, anywhere on it, is within three thousandths of being perfectly true and straight, then we're in very good shape. So, uh, so this will get mounted, like I say, to the reduction gear in the engine room. And I just have the string already tied on here because it was easy. We'll pass that through the engine room bulkhead and run it all the way aft into the stern tube. Figure out how to get it fished out through there. Probably just blast it through with some air or something. I don't know. Vacuum cleaner. Push it through with a stick. Something like that. And we'll get the... Uh, the cutlass housing on there and once we get that all positioned we'll tighten that up really good tie it off and we'll be ready to start getting these bearing blocks in place yeah so that one's pretty much ready to go once that line's in place we'll be able to put a level across it and then we can measure it and make sure that it's at the correct angle this way because it there's some slant to it so we got our coupling here Got our little handy dandy alignment spacer with a string. Got a bunch of extra twisted up on the outside of this, so it's ready to go. I'm just gonna drop this down here and get it uh, positioned on the reduction gear. Just gonna put three bolts in, that's enough to align it. That'll be fine. It's a uh, six bolt pattern, anyways, so that'll be that comes out equal and this is very uncomfortable just like everything on a boat it's got some bolts down in here uh, there's nothing real fancy about this you can see right here this is a pilot male pilot bore on the reduction gear that corresponds with the female bore on this coupling. Um, you have to match the coupling to the transmission or reduction gear. There's lots of different couplings on both, so you gotta make sure that you have the right one when you put these together or they won't work. The reason that you have that is to make it concentric. Even though you have a, a nice bolt pattern here and you would think that you could just line it up with bolts, you can't. If it's just off a tiny little bit, the thing is gonna be running in an elliptical orbit and that's no good. You have a lot of run out and um, you'll probably just destroy your equipment. So that pilot bore is very, very important. We also have the same thing on our intermediate and tail shaft. We have a spacer that will fit in between the two to ensure that they run true and concentric. So let's uh, see if we can get this thing up here. I'm just going to drop in a bolt or two to start with. It's very, very uncomfortable position. And of course, I don't think this is rotated correctly. Whoa, that'll work though. So I just need to turn this a little bit and then I can get the nut on it and tighten it up. Like most things on boats, we always kind of have to fight spacing and weird angles. Yeah, lots of weird uncomfortable angles. Where's that third one right here, Tristan? Uh, oh, there's that hump right there. Okay, we're off that. That's the important thing. I don't want to have to work around that right now. Okay, I got that one started. It's not going anywhere now. And Matt's got some wrenches for me. Unfortunately, we can't get like a air wrench on this or anything. There's 
just isn't enough clearance because of this shoulder down here. So we gotta just go about this the slow way. Forward on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know where all this is coming from is this hydraulic pump right here. People say Jimmy's are so oily and stuff, but this one's actually pretty darn clean. This fitting right here needs to be redone on that. What it needs is a male pipe thread with a female swivel on it and then if it leaks you can at least tighten it up a little bit without having to like mess with a bunch of plumbing but yeah that needs to be resealed we use some stuff called vibratite now i think uh loctite makes it also form of it but it's uh it's called an anaerobic sealant really really good for hydraulics if you got a leaky hydraulic fitting use that stuff we've used it on the fishtail on persistent weepy leaks that just leaked a tiny little bit and uh, yeah it fixed them they don't leak anymore I don't think I can do this from that position even though it seemed more comfortable. At least you can get in here though now, huh, Matt? Yeah, it was pretty bad before. And I have to tighten this up more. This is kind of the slow part because there's not a lot of clearance in here, this engine bed is in the way, so it's kind of a slow deal. Oh yeah. If I had an old rusty wrench, I'd probably cut the end of it off, but these are new. I don't think my partners would like that. I suppose I could just make a, just an open span or two, just for initially tightening these up and then use the big one at the end, that's a thought. Okay, that'll get us there. I'm gonna get all my nice pretty line Greasy hunty. Yeah. You think should we just remove this right now, huh? So all this is gonna go in this hole. Matt, you wanna pull this line? Mm -hmm. So we can keep it clean ish. Try and keep it out of the soup. It's actually pretty clean down here now. Tristan and Matt did a lot of work cleaning this area up. It was pretty bad. This is concrete now. It's almost impossible to get clean. 
could still use a good scrubbing. We'll get there. So the reason we go off the center of the shaft is that no matter the positioning of this, it is going to be straight and true. That's it. Got it? Yep. So next we'll go back to the stern where the cutlass bearing housing goes and we'll just toss that on there. There's really not much we can do back there as far as changing anything. Those bolts are going to more or less dictate the position of that cutlass bearing housing so that can actually just go on and get snugged up and then we'll come back in and we'll tighten everything up with some fresh glass back there put put some putty so it registers the shoulder of that cutlass bearing really good but it's not going to change any uh, those bolts are going to lock it into place at any rate so I'm just going to finish bolting this stuff up. You guys are probably see where we're going with this by now. Yeah, just three bolts will do it here anyways. And we'll just draw them up tight. You don't need to torque them or anything. As long as the, the face of this flange is tight. Now during a normal engine alignment, this is what you would actually be looking for is, is any gap between your two faces on this flange. So when you do go to align it, in this case it's not going to really matter for us because we're actually setting our bearing blocks and our bearings off of this line. So all this stuff should be really good to go right off the bat. But say you removed an engine or you put in a new shaft or something and you're going off the old bearing blocks and something changed this is what you would be looking for and you'd want to use a feeler gauge in here to make sure that this gap is consistent all the way around as you bring in your uh your coupling right here so there's two things you want to look for one is the gap between it is consistent you don't want that like any more than three thou and then also sag and that's the distance between this right here so if you had a coupling without pilot bearings you would have to be very very concerned about this if that's if that's off and not locked in and these two couplings aren't concentric to each other then like i say you're going to get an oscillating effect with this and that is a very, very bad thing to have. Depending on the vessel and stuff, there's also ways to mitigate that. If you, some, some boats use U-joints or flexible couplings. There's a lot of different things that you can do. But for, for larger vessels like this, just straight shaft and, and none of that stuff, then you want it to be running straight and true. And this one will be. All right, folks, I'm just going to get this stuff tightened up here, and we will meet you back outside. Oh, God, it's just like pure black on the screen. Yeah, let's set it. Well, let's set up my phone camera, but that actually won't do anything. I could cast some light with my phone, but that's about all I can do. Is that recording? Uh huh. How's it look now? Uh, it looks kind of yellow. or like greenish. Greenish? Like, yeah, it's like the colors coming out is green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe mom can work her color adding magic. You're smart. Alright guys, so you can barely see uh just got kind of cell phone light, but we're just gonna have to quickly throw this cutlass on and uh put this string through the uh, deal here or try to. So we just 
tied it to a, to a paper towel on the inside and used the compressor to blast it through the tail, the tail pipe, tail pipe, uh, shaft tube, CERN tube. Had to look for the words there. Yeah, it got dark on us quickly. Sure did. It, it looks darker on the camera than it really is. But anyways. <laughs> Try and see if I can put this in there. Might be impossible. Oh, we have to just push this out. Got to put a handy dandy <clears throat> reference mark, but it's actually fairly stuck in there. Yeah. Uh oh. All right, well, I doubt it'll be great footage, so uh, we're just gonna stick this line through that and slap that on. Maybe we'll go grab a flashlight or something and, and uh, show you what's up, or just tomorrow. It's basically just attaching this cutlass bearing housing to these bolts. We're not gluing it in yet, we're just dry fitting it and uh, getting our center line strung so we can Check it out on the inside. So we'll bring you back with more light. Or tomorrow. <laughs>